Okay, I just wanted to illustrate how to look at pre versus post survey data. So here we have a spreadsheet and we have um, different subjects like individuals and maybe you gave a survey and they had to fill out a Likert scale from one to five and subject one in the pre-survey, the pre-data, um, put a three. And then in the post data, they also put a three, but you can see some others increased a little bit, others went down. And now you wanna know, is there a significant difference? Is there a significant increase usually from the pre-survey to the post-survey data? So I'm gonna go over here to statskingdom.com. This is a very useful website and it has a number of different tests you can use, including, in this case, a paired t-test. So you click on paired t-test, and one of the first things it's gonna ask you is about the tails. And if you click on that, you have different options. Um, one is two tails, that's just, you're looking for any difference. It could be that the pre-data is larger than the post-data, or the post-data is larger than the pre-data. In most cases, you're looking for an increase um, from one survey to the next. So you would look for after being greater than the before data. So you can click that. And the rest of this you can leave as is. Um, and you move down here and you can enter the data. They have some mock data there, but if you go back to your spreadsheet, you can just copy and put in your before data, and then you're going to put in your after data or your post data. So you've copied those both in, and then you can hit calculate. And what you can see here is that um, it gives you a p-value, and it says the results of the parity test indicate that there is a significant medium difference between before and it gives you the M or median, or that might be the mean actually, of three and a standard deviation. And then it gives you the after data as well. But it's saying the p-value is 0 0.043, and that is less than an alpha of 0 0.05. So you can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is indeed a significant difference between before and after. Um, there's a few other things that you can note here. Um, it gives you some sample size and some other descriptive stats. Um, it also gives you um, the power and its statistical power is the likelihood of detecting a difference if there is one. And here it's pretty low. So if you were slightly higher than p-value of 0 0.05, you might want to consider a larger sample size because the, per the power is very low here. And then it's also looking at um, different assumptions. Um, those are down here, validation. So it's looking at outliers. It's saying it doesn't see any statistical outliers. It's also saying um, uh, that it does have normality, which is kind of surprising for Likert scale data of one to five. I actually did not think this would be would correspond to um, a normal distribution, but it's saying it does it does follow the normal distribution in this case, or at least you can't reject the null hypothesis that it's not a normal distribution. So, um, and it says, although the test priority, the priority power is low, you were still able to reject the null hypothesis. So um, it's still saying it, it would be good to have larger sample size if you can. Um, and the nice thing is this shows how to report it in APA style, so you can use this. Um, yes, you can just copy that out and utilize it in your paper um, because it is a tool that's helping you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just a quick overview of how to do this. Hope it's useful.